Okay, so lecture 16, finishing chapter 4. <clears throat> We're first going to introduce the left hand and right hand limits. So, the left, uh, the left, oh yeah, the right hand limits. It's like approaching from like positive side from 2x, right? So, this is like, oh, hey, you're just only considering the neighborhood of this. We don't consider this. And like you just apply the limit definition side, that's the right hand limit, and similarly for left hand limits. So we're gonna define discontinuous and we're gonna define what's simple discontinuity, which means that it is discontinuous at x and their left hand right hand limits exist. Then it's called the first kind discontinuous or simple. Simple discontinuous discontinuity. So in which that we either have they exist but don't equal to each other, or we have they equal to each other and it's not equal to fx. Right? If they are equal to each other, then that means that the limit of fx exists. Right? If that equal to fx, that means it's continuous. So we can't have that this equal to fx, right? Well, this certainly implies that the limit of fx doesn't even exist. Doesn't exist, how come we have continuity, right? And then we're going to define monotone functions. So real value functions from an open interval into real numbers such that, you know. So now we have a theorem. So f is increasing, monotone increasing on a b, then their both sides limits exist for any x in their interval. <laughs> and their supremum from a to x is equal to this limit, like this, all, all these holes, all these holes. <laughs> like, so fx is between the both sides limits and for the right hand side limits, it's an infimum from x from x to the b. And their left hand side limit is supremum of the sets from a to x. From a to x. <laughs> okay. So all, also if we have x is less than y, then we have this. Okay, so I prove it. So <laughs> We know that this is bound above by fx since f is increasing, right? So the supremum exists, call it a. So we know that this holds. Now we want to show that a is equal to this. So just for any epsilon greater than zero, we know that this is not ever bound because this is less than a, right? Well, then there exists delta such that x minus delta is in ax such that this is true right because <laughs> a minus L, uh, epsilon is not an upper bound of the of the image so we can have some some element f of s is in between where s is in a and x right well we'll just call it x minus delta because we're going to use the <laughs> Epsilon delta definition to prove some limits. And now we have this is true for any t and between x minus delta and x because f is increasing, right? I think I'm being clear, clear enough. Because a is the upper bound, so right? So this holds, this makes sense. And all the t are greater than a minus f because because like f x minus delta less than equal f of t right? because t is between this and we have this is true for all t inside which means that which means that for any of them is a delta such that for t in this neighborhood we have f t minus a is this which is the definition and similarly we can have this okay so now we're good with this 
plus female and now we want to show that okay we want to show this equality holds so similarly since x is less than y so x plus is in the infimum by this definition and it's in same as the infimum of x and y because y is less than b and f is increasing so it won't affect the lower bound right and also similar logic this is true because um you are because here's a here's x here's y right the supreme of this is the same as the supreme of this because your upper bound is not changing right it won't change your suprema and this is basically by the theorem we proved and now we compare these two right infimum is less than equal to suprema so this is less than equal to this and we're done right well this is of course true because it is right f of this is less equal to this similarly so this theorem we're good and now we want to show that okay the set of this continuity points is at most countable okay so by last theorem if f is discontinuous at x then we have this is less than this right we cannot have them equal to each other why because if they're equal to each other this is equal to this which means that fx is continuous so must be strictly greater and for any two real numbers there exists irrational numbers we let like for x there's associated rational number rx between them okay now we have there exist and now if x1 is different from x2 then we know that okay this is the equality inequality right from from here right okay well <laughs> this is true no 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 this is true then we know this is greater than r x1 r x2 right so r x1 cannot be equal to r x2 right so a different point at this continuities gives you different rational numbers which means that okay we have, we're going to define an injective functions so let e be the set of all discontinuous points and we have a function from e to rational numbers by g you take the discontinuous points and maps to the associated rational points then we know that okay e is <coughs> uh, equivalent to some subset of rational numbers <laughs> right and this of course uh the subset is of course injective and right so it is at most countable because q is countable and now we're gonna quickly walk through the definitions of limit to continue uh, limit to infinities <laughs> let me just talk about this more so so this means that okay for any point of this continuity there exists irrational numbers and different di different points gives you different rational numbers so after you list all of the discontinuities we have irrational numbers and they're all different well f for the image right let's, let's say uh, G -F -E, right well gfe well this is of course surjective right this is of course surjective and it's injective because different inputs give you different outputs 
right? Different inputs gives you different outputs. It's injective and subjective. So it's bijective. So they're equivalent. And it's equivalent to a subset of Q. Q is countable. And E is at most countable. Right. And we can define limits to infinities. So the neighborhood of infinity is to some real numbers, C, such that we consider this interval. Similar for this. And what does it mean by f of x as x approaches infinity? The limit exists, which means that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a C such that for any x in the neighborhood of infinity, we have this equality holds, inequality. And similar for this, right? Never finish in chapter four. We're gonna start derivative this Friday. Whatever.